Peter Laviolette is the new head coach of the New York Rangers. Vince, to which you say what? I say that I'm not surprised in the least. I had been, I mean, initially he was considered one of the favorites, but I think in the last couple of weeks it became increasingly clear, at least from the people that I was speaking to, that a lot of people expected him to get the job. But I think what caused some curiosity and maybe fueled some doubt was how long it took for them to announce this. I had heard last week that it might be coming as soon as Wednesday, probably by the end of the week, and then it continued to linger, and you couldn't help but wonder what was the holdup. Now, I think what's going to be interesting moving forward, because the reaction from the fan base here is a little bit ambivalent. It's a little bit uninspired. I I think that had this happened earlier, maybe that would have been a little bit different. But the more this dragged out, I think the more it made people think, while are they not thrilled with the options that they have right now? Are they waiting on anybody else? Is there something that maybe they were hoping that mater- would materialize that didn't materialize? And so I think the longer this went on, the more there was kind of that thought. And now it seems like at least the reaction I've gotten from the fan base in the last couple of days is – They're not crazy about this choice. I think when it comes to a guy like LaViolette, who, listen, I mean, the track record is is really, really good. He's the winningest American coach of all time, eighth all time on the NHL wins list. He's taken three different teams to the Stanley Cup final, which is something that not a lot of coaches Mm -hmm. can say that they've done. But there's a certain staleness associated with a guy who will now be on his sixth NHL coaching job and fifth in the Metro division. I mean, Rangers fans have, have watched this guy on the opposing bench with the Islanders, with the Hurricanes, with the Flyers, and most recently with the Capitals. So I think there was certainly at least a vocal segment of the fan base that was wondering, you know, can we try something fresh? Can we try something new? Is there no one out there who inspires confidence from the standpoint of, you know, maybe bringing in some innovative ideas, maybe bringing in something a little more youthful, something, you know, where maybe you might feel like he can relate to the players a little bit more, you know, a coach along those lines. But I certainly am not surprised that this is where they ultimately landed because I do believe that whether it's management or whether it's ownership, they wanted someone proven because they believe that this team should be competing for a Stanley Cup next season. And I don't think that they were going to feel confident enough to entrust that type of pressure and that type of responsibility to a guy who had never done the job before. We can debate whether that's the right mindset or not, but but that kind of circled us back to LaViolette. And when no one else, emerged when the situation in Pittsburgh was settled once Kyle Dubas made it clear that Mike Sullivan was staying. I know there's still a little curiosity in what's going to happen with Toronto, but I I think they were waiting to see maybe if other options came available. And as it became clear that that probably wasn't going to happen, they sort of circled back to LaViolette. You know, I want to pick up on something that you said there about Rangers fans have seen Peter Laviolette and his teams competing against the Rangers for a number of years. And, you know, even though they were at the time, and they still are, uh, in their infancy, uh, I can recall a lot of Vegas fans being really upset um, when they hired Peter DeBoer because as a young team, they had been conditioned to, and we saw it play out in the playoffs as well, hate everything about the San Jose Sharks. Uh, and that included the coach. And when when Pete DeBoer took over, there were, I think, a lot of them who, I don't know, had like significant misgivings uh, about about him behind the bench in Vegas. And there were, like, I'll just be blunt, like there were some that were flat out angry uh, and almost felt like betrayed. Like, how dare you go to one of our main rivals here to, to bring a coach in? I, I don't think it's anything like that, or at least it doesn't feel like that to me with the Rangers, but you're a lot closer to it. You know, what's the level of, I don't know, skepticism, anger that, you know, Peter Laviolette, who's coached against the Rangers so many years, is now leading the charge? I don't know if it's so much not wanting him because they look at him as a rival or anything like that. But I even think if you look at his most recent stop in Washington, I believe it was two first round exits. And then they didn't even make the playoffs and they had a losing record this year. Now, we know that that's an aging roster, and I'm sure that we could come up with reasons why the Capitals didn't have a ton of success under him. But again, I think more what I'm sensing from the fan base is just that sort of stale feeling. You know, they, I think, with Gerard Gallant, were willing to give the experienced guy who had been there and done that a chance. But I think when that didn't work out, 
I think they were sort of longing for someone who would bring in some fresher ideas, somebody who felt like a little more of an outside the box hire, a little more of an innovative hire. And to me, at least the feedback that I'm getting from fans, I think that is more of the sense. I don't think it's because, you know, they hated him when he was with the Flyers or anything like that. I mean, I I know they did for the most part at the time, but I think they're willing to accept anybody who they feel like is going to give the team a better chance to win. And we can talk about that as well, because I do think there are reasons that you can look at him compared at least to Gerard Gallant and say that this does appear in some respects to be an upgrade for the Rangers. But Mm -hmm. I also don't sense a ton of excitement right now. And again, to me, it sort of comes back to that recycled feeling, you know, the same names always in the coaching cycles and, and that maybe not juicing up the fans as much as somebody who would be less proven and would come with more question marks, but they also would perceive as having more upside. You know, everybody wants to find their own version of the John Cooper or the Jared Bednar or the Rod Brindamore. Uh, But, you know, I don't think the Rangers, (laughs) I don't think the Rangers felt like there was an option out there for them that would sort of meet that criteria. 